Welcome to episode two of Discover East 2021 Pursue series, our monthly virtual speaker series connecting thousands of women around the world for uplifting conversations that help us persevere and thrive in engineering and technology careers. I am thrilled to introduce you to today's inspiring speaker, Abby Babajide Ferguson. Abby is a business performance lead for Shell Deepwater in the male-dominated profession of oil and gas. She's worked in both technical and managerial roles, both in the U.S. and abroad, and is committed to helping women look outside the box to find fulfillment and flexibility in their career progression. Beyond being a full-time working mom with two young kids, Abby loves traveling, exercising, singing, dancing, and flying. Yes, flying. She holds a private pilot's license on top of it all. Please welcome Abby. I'm Abby Babajde Ferguson. I am a mom. I am a wife, I am an engineer, and I consider myself also um, a global citizen. And when I say global citizen, it's not just in, in, in terms of I think we all have a responsibility uh, to uh, make the world a better place for others, for ourselves, for the future generations coming behind us, uh, but from also having had the opportunity to, to live and work uh, around the world. It's uh, allowed me to experience different cultures, different people. I also met my husband in an overseas assignment, you know, where, and now I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old who, who keep me very busy during this time, uh, especially during COVID times. So when I was asked to t speak to how we get women in engineering to persevere in the workplace, um, to be honest, it was, I was excited. It was a great opportunity, but I was also a bit intimidated. You know, I, I thought to myself, you know, do I have it all figured out? <laughs> you know, do I have, uh, and I'm being asked to speak to, to other women in, in this area. And the answer is no, I don't have it all figured out, but maybe it's, let me inject my first piece of advice here. Then women in engineering, we have something to offer your experience. There's something you can teach someone else or share with someone else, someone else that would be beneficial. So the first thing I had to do was uh, make sure <laughs> to, to tell myself, yes, I don't have it all figured out, but I hope that I can share my experiences, the things I think, uh, the steps I've made in my career that I think have worked well and the many mistakes <laughs> I think I've made uh, and learned from. And I hope when you hear me say mistakes, you don't think, uh, I mean regrets there, because I've actually learned a lot from my mistakes. They're some of the most valuable experiences I, I, I've had and takeaways I've had in my career, having from some of the mistakes I've made. It's taught me a lot about myself, um, about others, and how I would maybe do some things differently um, in the future. So, so maybe another piece of advice there, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Be okay with being uncomfortable, right? You know, so push yourself to to get out of your comfort zone, because I think it's in that that we grow, you know, that we thrive, um, and, and that has been experience for me. Uh, and so I encourage others to take that leap of faith and, and take that step out there. Professionally, I uh, currently work as a business uh, performance improvement lead at Shell, and that role actually gives me. Uh, an opportunity to have more insight into the different parts of our businesses in deep water and how do we improve, right? Looking at both external benchmarks and internal benchmarks, you know, across the, the Shell organization. As you know, we're in, in many countries around the world. I think it's exciting to be looking at ways that I can help our business to be more competitive, right? whether it's remove uh, waste, be more value for our shareholders, how we tackle the energy transition. Prior to that, I've had a variety of technical and leadership roles in the company. Uh, so when I started as a graduating as an engineer, as a chemical engineer, actually, um, I started in a technical role in Shell. I came in as a chemical engineer, and shortly after, I moved into uh, the discipline of production technology uh, role. Uh, so many in the industry know it as production engineering. About 10 years into that role, 
um, I decided to pivot. I wanted to broaden my experience base a bit um, because I, I felt it would learn about other parts of the company, uh, how things work, um, I thought would make me a better engineer and overall a more accomplished professional. And so when I did broaden, I moved from an engineering role into an HR role, <laughs> which you could say are, are two ends of a spectrum, <laughs> very technical to not too technical. I think what I brought into that role with my technical background was I understood maybe a bit more about what those projects were about, what kind of disciplines we needed in the, in the project from the production engineering standpoint. Uh, and so I was better able to help with deploying staff to the right place um, that was also right for their development and right for the project that we were working on. So, so that was exciting. Following that, I moved into a role in learning. Again, <laughs> uh, a bit of a, another broadening assignment. If I'm honest, you know, learning was not something I had on, on my radar or something I was looking to move into. But when this opportunity came along, um, it, it gave me the opportunity to revamp how we did learning in Shell, like how we delivered learning for our new graduates coming in. One of the things that I think has been um, helpful for me in my career has been not to box myself in, you know, just with a label as an engineer. I, I'm an engineer, but I think it's important to also be flexible in the type of roles that you go after and the type of roles that you, you take on. I think it's important to understand for yourself, you know, what are you aspiring to? What kind of roles are you aspiring to? And having that in mind, also think about what kind of roles will help you get there and look at the opportunity that it presents for you to uh, bring your background, your experiences and strengths into that role and how you can further develop yourself um, in that role. I think you know, I sometimes get the question that how can you present yourself as a credible candidate in a role that's maybe not your core discipline? And I would say, um, I, I use the analogy of, of, a, of a tree, which, you know, uh, another senior leader had shared with me, uh, which is with a tree, you can look at the tree trunk as your core discipline and you can branch out from it. As long as you don't branch out too, too far away, you still are connected you know, to that core. And that core, it can be your support system. It can be the, the knowledge and experiences you draw on that helps you into, in whatever you branch out um, into. So in my experience, uh, using the Global Skill Pool Manager role, um, while functionally sat in HR, um, we were looking at deployment of technical staff. And my experience having worked in production engineering helped me to really have a better understanding of what kind of projects we are working on and you know what's the right type of discipline to uh, that we need in, in, in that respect and the right staff to deploy there uh, that was also beneficial for the project but also beneficial for that staff uh, development. It's helpful to broaden, take a chance, get don't box yourself in, um, challenge yourself and, um, and that can be really helpful career-wise. It's important to have strong delivery but networking is also important. It's also about building relationships, right? So with the people you're working with, you're building a relationship there, but it's also about expanding that circle. A piece of advice from a senior leader that kind of stuck with me and it resonated for me. Um, he said, um, networking is like a bank, right? Over time, you wanna invest in doing that and you build up currency in that bank. So that when you need to go withdraw from the bank, you have currency built up in there that you can withdraw from. So if you have nothing built up <laughs> and you haven't invested any time in building those relationships or any time in getting to know uh, people in other parts of the organization, putting yourself out there to be more visible as well, then when you need to, to draw from on those, on those relationships and it's maybe a little bit too late at, at the end of the day to, to want to pull something out of it that you haven't invested anything into. 
start building those relationships now, start networking now, because overall it's a great thing to do just if, if it's driven just to build a, re- a relationship and understand um, how another part of the business works. Another thing that I've learned is focus on your strengths. Many times, I, I think uh, we look at what we're naturally good at and we say, okay, I'm naturally good at this, so I need to focus on the areas that I'm not so great and, and really work on those. But I wish I had learned this much earlier in my career. I think it's important to put your energy into focusing on your strengths and get really good at what you're good at. Because I think that's how you make um, the biggest contributions and and delivery in, in, in whichever role that you're in. And I think that's sometimes the, the mistake that we make. Don't be afraid to speak up and be direct even. And I know it's not comfortable for everyone. A lot of people say, that's not my personality, that's not me. And, and that's fine. Again, I say, find a style that you're comfortable with. When men do it, it comes across as being confident. And sometimes when, when women do that, you know, I'll say they come across as being maybe bossy would be the, the nice word I'll, I'll use um, that uh, folks might perceive it in that way. But I think when we instead try to soften the blow or, or uh, being direct with what we're trying to say, it can sometimes come across as, uh, a lack of confidence or competence, you know. So uh, from that angle, I say, you know, it, it's important, you know, to to be able to get your message across clearly and to be and to be direct. I also think it's important for each person to know themselves, right? You know, to know what makes you tick, know what you're naturally good at, and what maybe you're not so great at. When we talk about success. Success doesn't look the same for, for every one of us, right? So we might be all women in engineering, but we are also wonderfully unique, right? We, we're different. What The experiences we have, who we work with, what jobs we've had, all shape part of the uh, unique person, unique person that, that we are. One of the challenges I think uh, many women in the workplace have is oftentimes we're juggling um, childcare, and, you know, and working, I think many times the home care responsibilities end up falling on our shoulders. It's not the case for everyone, but, but many times uh, that's what we see with women working in, um, in the workplace. My way of coping with that is by planning and being really organized. So I plan out a lot of things. I have a calendar that even blocks out when I need to eat <laughs> for the day, lunch, take a break, time to think. And, you know, of course, time, you know, to to work on some key project work. And, you know, in COVID times like this, uh, sometimes that's late at night for me, right? You know, once the kids are in bed. That may not fit your schedule, but figure out what fits your schedule. I, I think that's important to do. Lean on your support system. Don't be afraid to do that, whether it's family and friends or even paid help, you know, to for a babysitter to watch the kids sometimes, uh, uh, not just so you can work, but just so you can have a break <laughs> to think, um, to some downtime. And I also have a very supportive husband who we, we have a dual career, you know, situation. He's working, I'm working. And, you know, we, we when we look at the assignments we take, it's also keeping in mind as to what fits also for our family situation and, you know, how can we organize ourselves and um, what support do we may we need to bring in to help us to to, to do what we, we we want to do and what we want to pursue also career-wise. I think that's important that companies look at that and take it seriously around ensuring that there's diversity and, and there's uh, certainly inclusion um, in the workplace. But if I take it home a bit as to what should that mean for us as women um, in engineering, I think Women in engineering, whether you know it or not, you have something to contribute for sure. Whether it's just being visible. When young girls see other women in you know, certain types of occupations in, in STEM, psychologically, I think that does something you know, in terms of, you know, I can aspire to be that too. When you see some occupations that are really male dominated and, and you see 
uh, just a male figure visible for for that specific profession. Sometimes it, it feels like watching a movie, right? You're a bit removed from it. You can see you, you see it done, but you don't have maybe a personal connection to that. But I, I think um, girls in 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 high school and middle school, even just seeing women in those professions um, starts to create that sense of you know I can be that too. I can achieve that too. So. I think we have a role to play in that, to to be visible, and to to help those coming, you know, behind us uh, to to prepare, right, uh, a workplace that will also be more inclusive um, for them. Another, I would say, is you know, finding a mentor, and this is why again it's important to have women also in senior roles because they've also gone through probably what what you're going through and you know and have learned from their experiences there but you know someone you can comfortably share with you know what you're dealing with and you know any advice that they they might have to offer there but i think it's also someone to support you as you make those changes and and help have your back so to speak right a way to to navigate that practice in those changes that may not come naturally to you, but also find a support system in the workplace, you know, find a mentor that, you know, you can, you can go to and, and speak to that can, can also back you up. And so, so maybe I, I'm using two phrases there is a mentor and there's a sponsor. And I would say find both, you know, a mentor, you know, I think can, can be someone you go to and speak to, to um, also share a situation that you're going with and get advice from them. But a sponsor will, also, I think, be able to put you up potentially, you know, for potential rules that may be coming up that may be beneficial for you. At the table where they're discussing, you know, who might be a great candidate for this, they may be someone that can speak to what they know about you and your accomplishments and to help make sure you get that opportunity potentially or um, a candidate that's considered for it. Uh, and I think this is where sponsorship can also be uh, quite helpful. For me, Imagine Tomorrow is about how we encourage more women and more girls in school to take up careers in STEM. It's about how we pave the way for them to, to also see careers in STEM as exciting and something achievable for them. It's about how we make them feel welcome at the table when they come to the workplace, how we make sure they're included, how we make sure they feel heard. Imagine Tomorrow is about hopefully not fighting some of the battles that I know, you know, women who've come before me have fought to, to make a place at the table for, uh, for other women. So when I imagine tomorrow, that's, that's what I, I, I think about. I think of women leading engineering companies, women leading technical companies. Uh, I see more women, you know, in senior management positions. That's what I think of when I think about imagine tomorrow. Get ready with your questions. We've got Abby joining us for a live Q&A. So find that Q&A button on the toolbar at the bottom of your screen and let's continue the conversation.